Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be answering some of the questions that I get asked a lot in terms of console mods, and for those of you that are just jumping into the game or maybe are new to the modding process, this video will hopefully answer some of those questions for you guys and make your experience of running these mods a lot smoother. Now, I've put together a little bit of a list of a lot of the console mod-related questions that I normally see, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the list. Now, the first question that I see a lot in terms of truck testing videos is what map is that and what map are you on in regards to the summer testing grounds? Now, I don't really use the winter testing grounds on the channel very often, but the summer testing grounds, I do show it on a pretty regular basis. Now, in order to get to the summer testing ground, you can actually access it on all systems. Now, the gameplay that you're watching right now was recorded on an Xbox Series X, but like I said before, you can access these testing ground maps on PC, Xbox and PlayStation and with these testing ground maps the cool thing about the testing ground maps is that you don't have to download them from anywhere you don't have to uh, search for them in the mod browser all you do is either hit Y or triangle and you click select map and then right from there you have summer proving grounds and winter proving grounds as an option so either one of those maps are available to you guys no matter what mods you have no matter what mod lineup you have and no matter what system you have and if you click on summer proving grounds you'll wait through a small loading screen and then once that loading screen is complete you'll actually load into the testing ground map that you guys recognize from a lot of my videos and also that's the map that has the mudding section the uh kind of like little cliffside area as well as some of the uh the, the testing hills where you can do towing tests and of course the bridge jump now once again here we are on the testing map and let's go ahead and move on to item number two so now we find ourselves in Lime's new Duramax, his High Country Duramax, which is, by the way, fully available on all consoles as of now. And what we're going to be talking about this time is the question of when will X mod come to console? Like, when will A mod, I use X to represent the idea of any, but um, when will any certain mod come to console? And really, the answer to that question is it all depends on what that mod is and what they have done in order to present that mod to the developers for testing. Now, as far as mod testing goes, the way the process works is a mod creator needs to create a mod around the console-friendly guidelines. Then, once they set it as a public mod on PC, it is then sent to the developers or put in the, de in the developer's queue to be tested for console access. The developers will then test that mod and they will either approve it or deny it. And sometimes what will happen is maybe a truck or a vehicle meets those console-friendly guidelines entirely, but maybe doesn't necessarily pass from a compatibility standpoint or maybe from a memory leak standpoint. That happens a lot more than a lot of people realize. So what then happens after that is they go back to the modder, tell them what they need to fix, and then the modder will attempt to fix that and then update the mod, and then it gets put back into the testing queue. Now, sometimes some mods will pass immediately, and then sometimes other mods will have a lot of back and forth and back and forth and back and forth before they end up getting approved for console. Now, one other thing to keep in mind if you're new to the console friendliness uh, system is that vehicles with real-world branding, so like, let's say, for example, any vehicle that has a company logo on it like Ford or Chevrolet or Toyota or Nissan, and those brands basically if there is a brand logo on a vehicle it automatically removes it from console friendliness or console eligibility due to obviously trademarks and copyrights based around the designs of the vehicles as well as the designs of the logos that's why as you can see right here on say for example Lime's Ares, which is modeled after a High Country Duramax, the front end and the grill have been altered slightly, and so have other pieces of the truck, including the tailgate that says Lime's, as well as the steering wheel that says Lime's as well. Now, another common question or concern that I see a lot is, a mod disappeared from my mod browser. Is it gone? What happened to it? And what should I do? Now, 99% of the time, I would say roughly, uh, when a mod disappears from the mod browser, it is because, or at least from the mod browser on console, it is because the creator of that mod has updated the mod and the mod has gone into what is called recheck. Now, recheck is basically a list of mods that have been updated that the developers need to retest before they can allow them to go back onto the mod browser on console. Now, another issue, though, with the way that 
that was presented initially is that people were updating their mods and then people would lose them in the mod browser. They wouldn't see where they would show up. And basically, you need to go into your mod browser and change the sorting parameter from recently added to most recently updated. Most recently added will only show you the most recently added vehicles to mod.io and most of the time that doesn't coincide with what the newest vehicles are or what the newest vehicle updates are. So if you want to see the latest of everything, make sure once again that you have your mod browser set to latest updates. And if a vehicle has disappeared from your mod browser, chances are that that's because it's in recheck. And this has happened to the Peterman a lot. This has happened to a lot of other trucks recently a lot. Like for example, the Custom 20 was in recheck for a little while and just recently got updated as of the date and time of recording this video. But once again, if a mod that you have been using disappears from the mod browser, make sure to know that that does not mean it has been, you know, removed or deleted or deactivated or anything like that. There is a really, really, really good chance that it is just sitting in recheck, waiting to get re-verified and go back onto your mod browser. Now our next point takes us back to the main menu. Now the reason why we're back on the main menu is because another question that I get asked a lot is how do I use mod maps? How do I start and use mod maps? Now this can be a little bit tricky if you're just getting into the game for the first time and the way you actually access mod maps and use them is you go to your mod browser, you find the map you want to use, like let's say for example you want to use a map that has been recently added. So what we're seeing right now is a lot of vehicles. So what you can actually do is go to sort and filter. And as you can see right here, change it to date updated or whichever one you prefer, but I prefer date updated. So if you change it to date updated, then you switch to filter and scroll down and it will actually allow you to change it to just maps. So I've got it sorted by date updated on maps only. And then once you click back, it will show you the most recently updated maps, including Rutland, which is Highway Hauling 3, the third map in the Highway Hauling series. You also have Bootleg Hollows, which is a really fun uh, off-roading and trail riding based map. You also have RTC, which is Remo's Test Course, which is really good for basically testing every aspect of a vehicle from mudding to crawling to towing capacity and just about anything that you might want to do there. Now, since RTC is very small and it'll download very quickly, I'm going to use it to to demonstrate how to do this. So go ahead and click subscribe and the map will download. And then once it downloads, go ahead and click accept and then it will install. And then you can click A to turn it on. Now, once you've turned the mod to on, now you don't click, say for example, more and then select map like you, like you might in order to get into the testing grounds. What you do is you go back to the main menu you click new game and then you click custom scenarios. Once you click custom scenarios, you'll see a list of all of the maps that you have currently enabled in your mod list. Say for example, you wanted to start RTC or Remo's test course, go ahead and click on RTC. And then I have all of my saves full right now, but let's say for example, I didn't want the RC backyard racetrack anymore. All you would need to do is click delete and then accept. And then once you do that, you've got a fresh save that you can click A on and that will load you in to Remo's test course. Now, once again, it's a little bit of an odd way to enable maps and there's not really a super straightforward explanation for that when you're first jumping into the game. But once again, that was something back when I started playing SnowRunner that I was a little bit confused about. But if you're just getting into the game and you're trying to figure out how to start mod maps, that is how you do that. Now, another question that I see a lot is why won't my mods work in multiplayer? Now, obviously, mod compatibility requirements will vary from system to system, but this is primarily focused on people that are asking why their mods don't seem to be working in multiplayer on console, namely Xbox and PlayStation. So the reason why your mods may not be working on console could have basically, th there could be a variety of issues going on, right? For example, you, you or your friend might be trying to, or your group of friends might be trying to play, let's say, for example, in multiplayer with someone that does not have a console with as high of a RAM capacity as your console. Now, that might mean that you may be able to run a certain amount of mods at once, but they might not be able to run that amount of mods at once. Now, what I recommend doing is I recommend making sure that everyone in your multiplayer lobby goes ahead and verifies beforehand that they all have the 
same mods installed. Now, if you do that, that can eliminate a lot of issues right out of the gate because if you do that, you'll be able to figure out what mods will work with each other and what mods won't, and also what mods will and won't upset your variety of consoles because, once again, every console is going to have a slightly different RAM requirement based on the way the game dynamically calculates the RAM capacity. So say, for example, an Xbox Series X is going to have more RAM capacity, a lot more actually, than a original Xbox One. Same is true with, say, for example, a an Xbox Series S versus an Xbox One S or PS4 versus PS5 and so on. And usually when you're playing multiplayer with your friends, you're usually going to end up playing with friends that aren't on the exact same system as you. They might have a system that is in the same Xbox family or the same PlayStation family, but it won't always be the exact same, same system. So it really will benefit you to start small with the amount of mods that you're using. Maybe, for example, one map and two trucks. Try that, and if it works, you can try to add on more and more mods from there. But if you have an older console, like, for example, a original Xbox One or an original PS4, those in particular particular are going to have more issues running large amounts of mods due to the RAM load. Now, this, which is Lime's Ares or Lime's High Country Duramax, has a very interesting feature. And if you haven't equipped the water crossing suspension before, make sure you equip it because if you go down to change suspension mode, it does this. And it keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up until it stops and then at this point you have a well basically something that limes made as a joke and i'm not mad about it at all whatsoever i absolutely love the fact that he did this and i'm going to attempt to drive it through one of these mud pits out here on remo's test course in river crossing mode and i'm gonna probably have to do it in low because if i do it in anything faster I guarantee you it will do a wheelie and it will flip backwards and then I won't be able to recover it. Oh my god. Even then, the torque is still... It's a lot. And it's really tricky to keep it where it needs to be kept. Okay, easy. If I can balance this all the way to the end, that is going to be a huge victory for me because I have never gotten it to do this before. You just have to be extremely patient. Like, genuinely extremely patient. Otherwise, it will ooh, it will not go very well. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We are almost there. We are almost there. We're doing this. We are doing this. Do not flip over right here at the end. Really? Really? Well, you guys decide in the comment section. Let me know if that run counts because I made it all the way through the muddy water, but right when I got to the exit... Boop, it flopped over. So once again, let me know in the comment section down below if uh, that run counts. And also, let me know in the comment section below if this video helped you if you were new to the game or especially new to the console mod process. Let me know if any of these simple tips in this video helped you out or gave you any insight on maybe how to make your console modding experience run a little bit more smoothly. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I will see you all in the next one. Talk to you all later, and I hope you guys... Has enjoyed.